Welcome to the Howie and Beast Mode podcast, where we discuss all things business, including growth, strategy, and execution, as well as personal and professional development. Let's join Howie and Beast Mode in conversation. Well, Beast Mode, hey, it's good to reconnect. We had a week off. We did. It was one of those things that wasn't planned, but I, I, you know, it was great for both of us personally and professionally. So. Yep. I got to drive to New Mexico with the wife and see some mountains and some deserts, uh, but that's not a very conducive uh, thing for podcasting. So yeah, we're, we're I'm glad to, to reconnect and I feel pretty recharged. Got a little bit of sun maybe, but I'm still pretty pale, I guess. Yeah, no, everything's good. Yeah, definitely driving in the mountains is not good for podcasting, but <laughs> you know, I had a little bit of family time as well, uh, you know, good. and uh, you know, just, been overwhelmed. I started a nonprofit, which you know I'm not going to plug, but it's just uh, it's just really cool the the amount of good that can be done in, in this kind of just troubling time. So, well, actually, you should plug it. Um, I mean, is there like a little link someone can check out or anything, or do you want to you want to wait or you want to plug something? Uh, sure. I mean, yeah, you can go to cleanupusa.org. Uh, and find out what we're doing. We're just uh, feeding the homeless at the moment, and soon we'll be transitioning into giving the homeless in DFW. And, and again, it's very scalable, so I don't know if it's something that's going to scale, but uh, giving the homeless across uh, DFW an opportunity to clean up, you know, so awesome. it be awesome. fairly simple. Well, it's uh, something that you and I take uh, for granted, you know, and so being able to commoditize wellness and wholeness and um, dignity like that is really awesome. So we will uh, look forward to hearing about that. And maybe in the future, we can hear, uh, you know, startup tips for, for nonprofits too. So yeah, that'd be great. Cool. Well, I guess I, I can share first on this one. This topic is uh, close to my heart. I have been laid off due to COVID. I can't remember if we even mentioned that in a previous podcast we may have uh, but you know I'm in the process of searching for a job um, the type of job that I am coming from is sales management I also have uh, a lot of years of sales before that but I'm kind of in a position where I'm I've been more in sales management for quite a, quite a number of years so probably kind of focused on that uh, obviously during a pandemic it's not a fun time to be uh, without work um, you know but here we are and so what we thought we would do what Beast Moon and I thought we would do is just chat with you guys a little bit about some things uh, that could be useful in terms of job search. Uh, some of them are going to be just good reminders for things, uh, and some of them might be new tactics, uh, but we thought we would just keep this super fresh and relevant because there are times in our lives when we need to find a job. And, and so in your case, you might be con you know, contemplating coming out of college. You've got maybe some school loans. You're saying, wow, this is an, a really bad time to be with no experience, you know, to be coming out of college and you want to find a job. I totally get that. Uh, or you may be uh, someone who's further along in your career like myself, where, you know, you start worrying about, um, you know, just the dynamics of being further along in your career, uh, or you may be mid-career. And so, yeah, so I think we'll just kind of wrap about that a little bit, Beast Mode. Yeah, and, and I mean, obviously, the topic's really fresh uh, for you. Uh, again, as a consultant, which is what I've been doing now for for a couple of years, I mean, you're you're always on the hunt, and so it's one of those things that you just got to be prepared for at any moment. Something could happen. Um, I, I'm kind of I'm kind of along for the ride with this for you, just because I know it's it's really on your heart, and I know that this is just a, a topic that we can encourage others in uh, i do have some topics that i think would be helpful with personal branding uh along the way but i'm follow your lead that's great well i appreciate that so we'll just kind of you know kind of wrap back and forth like we always do i mean i think the first thing to to obviously do is work on your resume um you don't have to pay for a resume service to to get it perfect um but if you can have someone look at it outside of yourself then that's great and you know focus on you know Unlike my resume, my resume is pretty long, um, but I've tried to make it shorter and simpler and, you know, try to 
you know, everyone would tell you try to make it, uh, you know, a little on the shorter side and as simple as possible, but have your resume. Also have a cover letter. Uh, that's just a, a an, so in my particular cover letter, it's just an inspirational uh, comment about some, you know, some ways I view business. Uh, and that's my cover letter. And, and a lot of companies, when you apply on their websites, have the option to attach documents or to specific, even sometimes explicitly attach a cover letter. And so why not take advantage of that additional, as Beast Mode says, that's, that's a branding opportunity. So go ahead and do that. Um, one other thing that I will mention is that I'm doing, Beast Mode will attest to this, I'm writing almost every day on LinkedIn. Um, sometimes I do a lot of planning for my posts and I kind of keep a backlog of posts of things I want to, I want to post on LinkedIn. Uh, in this case though, since my brain, since I don't have a, a job right now, my brain is way more free. So I'm just having topics pop in my head and then I just write them and it's just a few minutes, but it's good to use online opportunities for postings. Uh, I wouldn't say Facebook would be best for this. I think LinkedIn is a place for this. Um, but online postings that kind of help highlight things that will help your friends and your audience and all that. But also, let's be honest, that do kind of showcase who you are and what you can do, right? So it's a double thing. You are giving and you are receiving at the same time. I have actually done something this, this round uh, of being jobless where there's people that I want to keep in touch with that are like CEOs or chief revenue officers since I'm on the sales side of the world. Uh, where I will write a particular post and I'll, it'll kind of speak to me that that might be good for a particular individual. And so I will, I will send them, a, I don't know if you guys know this, you can send a private message on LinkedIn with one of your posts. So it's a great way to specifically invite them to check out your post. And I have an interview, you know what, let's not call it an interview, that's way overstating it. I have a conversation with a CEO this Friday at three o'clock because I sent him a particular post that I wrote might've been yesterday or the day before. I don't, I don't know exactly. Uh, but, and, and I've had another interview happen that way as well. So, you know, using your content on, and again, I think beast mode would say that's part of branding, uh, yeah. but, you know, but use that. So any, any, anything that kind of hits you out of, out of that beast mode? Yeah. I mean, basically you're, you're inviting the world into, into what's going on. <clears throat> Most people don't want to do that. They want to keep it, hush hush or uh again we we live in this touch and go society where we want to show all the good and hide all the bad but really just like you said I, I i love the fact that you're doing it where you're just here's content um i think it's valuable for everybody and whenever it's specific to somebody i'm going to share it with you you know i'm not asking for anything you don't owe me anything if you'd like to talk about it let's talk about it if not that's fine but i'm just going to sow seeds Mm -hmm. um, I know you've heard me say that both on the, the business side, but on the personal side, there's n you can't ever, ever go wrong with sowing seeds. Hmm. That's great. So have a little faith. Beast Mode is saying, you know, listen, sow those seeds, you know, seeds, take, you know, you have to plant them and water them. So, you know, stay with it and be patient. Um, I, I will tell you, you know, I'm going to be, I think, you know, Beast Mode and I have done an okay job about being transparent. Um, literally by me saying it in that way, it's recognizing that even that, you know, we have room to go to, to grow there. But I will say I had a pretty dark day yesterday. Uh, you know, I think one of the recommendations that I would make uh, is to make sure that you do some self care. Uh, if you are the kind of person who's open to praying, I had uh, my neighbor, actually, she's over here right now, best friends with my wife. Um, you know, her and my daughter and my wife uh, prayed for me yesterday, you know, and that really helped me. So have a community. I think having a community is a really big idea. Uh, but what Bismo said a, a second ago spoke to me as far as being, you know, vulnerable and putting yourself out there, I think is really good. Um, but do some of those, those self-care things. Are you taking this time to lose weight? Let's be honest, right? Especially during COVID. Now, if you watch this five years from now and you're like, what's COVID, you know, during the pandemic is, is what we're talking about. Um, but are you losing weight right now? Right? I mean, you, you know, this is an opportunity for you to be more fit. And if you're more fit, you're more confident and it helps your mental health too. So I am doing that. I'm very consistent with that. You know, I've definitely lost weight and gotten more trim during this pandemic, uh, which is nice because when you interview, 
I hate to say it, people do judge you a bit, right? Mm. So, uh, I don't know, B. Smith, I think you've done a good job of staying active, and I know you run a lot. Yeah, I, I mean, a lot of my uh, thinking, my content creation comes in that time. Uh, wow. I'm probably very unique in the fact that I generally, uh, so kind of like this, the start of my day is generally um, from 5 to around 7.30 or 8. I do a walk and read and prayer all at the same time so i just walk with my ipad and i'm reading and i'm praying and um i'm getting my exercise and at the end of that you know i'm generally done yeah on good days probably close to nine ten miles on some days if i'm stopping and thinking then less than that but that's the start of my day that's where i if i don't have that it's very rough to get going you know so i need that every morning hmm. So that self-care aspect, I think, is a really, really big idea for sure. Uh, you know, because if you if you've got that tank full, uh, spiritually and mentally and physically, uh, then you certainly have more to offer. I think one of the things to be aware of too is during interviews, you'll get some interviews during this time. It's just that there's more competition because tons of people are out of work right now. Um, yeah. So you know, make sure that you are looking good, right? So today I interviewed with a friend of mine that I worked for back in 2014 and 2015, but I hadn't really talked to him since then. And I wore a sport coat and a button down shirt on zoom for him. Right. And it's partly just a respect thing. Uh, so, you know, have your hair and you're, you know, if you're a guy, you know, get yourself trimmed, you know, facial, whatever format you you're going for, uh, no in, way. Beast, in beast modes, uh, instance, that would just be basically combing, combing the good <laughs> stuff. Uh, Moving. From, <laughs> yeah for me it would just be um you know to, to the the boyish you know 11 year old that my daughter my, that my wife thinks i look like an 11 year old when i should um you know but yeah have that you know have yourself a little bit fixed up and you know uh you know obviously in a con, you know sort of a conservative way i mean you don't want to be you know out there too much in, in any way but uh yeah have you know look the part for sure and that'll help your confidence as well and then for the interview of course, you know, there's like three big things to remember for the interview. Number one, you have to go to the page of the person who's going to interview you. Because on LinkedIn, people can tell if um, their, pro their profile has been viewed by you. And so if you didn't view the profile before the interview, then it looks like you're not prepared. So literally just do that. And then of course, when you're there, read about them. Uh, so today, when I interviewed with Alex, I was reminded that we didn't just work together back in 2014, 2015, but also back in 2000 through 2004, I didn't know him, but I did work at the same company. And it's just fun to reminisce about that uh, and just talk about like, oh yeah, we, we were surprised, you know, we had two instances. Uh, so look at their profile, you'll find something interesting. You know, read if they're a poster, so you know, Beast Moon and I are posters on LinkedIn, not everybody is, but if they have posted something, then try to find something that you can say about that post. You know, try to have some relevant relationship connections. And if to the salespeople in the audience, if this sounds like selling, well, it is. You know, it's a lot of, you know, the branding that BSML was mentioning uh, and then the selling. So any thoughts on any of that? Yeah. Uh, when you're coming, when you're approaching business, and especially if you are, on the rebound for a job or, or you are looking to elevate yourself, you cannot discount your personal side. You can't, you can't, you can't. And so, although you may have a stellar resume, you know, a lot of people do. Okay. Um, but your personal side is just way off They're They're hiring both sides, you know, and maybe it's the other way around. Maybe your personal side is phenomenal. You're, uh, you are incredible now on the social aspect, but I mean, you can't get a simple resume together. They go hand in hand. And so it's just a lot of this is, is common sense when we think about it, when we break it down, but we don't do it. And so I, I'm right on board with everything Howie's saying. You got to, you got to put yourself out there, be vulnerable in that aspect. You got to let people know who you are. And then when you come to the table, you better be ready to not only talk about yourself, but talk about business. You got to do both. They both lift each other up, you know. Good.
Love it. So look at their profile on LinkedIn, look at their company page, you know, watch the company intro video a couple of times. Uh, you know, if you can write a few questions about the product or about the company, then that's great. Um, but you better prepare some questions. So that's, that's another thing. Make sure that you study the company and you're, you have a basic understanding that you can, you know, in a couple of, even if it's several sentences that you can say what the company basically does, uh, tell them, you know, be able to tell them why you're interested, why you, you know, why you like that and why you're interested. So some of that good interview prep and then have your questions ready. So I, they want to make sure that you have intelligent questions that are ready to go. And it's okay if you read them. I mean, that's just preparation. So it shows you're prepared. It doesn't, you know, you don't have to feel uh, any certain way if, um, you know, if you're reading off of something. So I think the more preparation you do, the better. You're really good at this, which is just, you know, using your personal network. I mean, you're the best. You're better at it than I am. Um, you know, culture, you know, sort of a cultivating your personal network. I mean, that's where a lot of opportunities do come from. So how can we, you know, come up with some ways of sort of like getting our name out there through friends, family, relationships, how can we do, you know, some of that good cultivating? Yeah, I'm just going to take a, take a slide from a, a talk that I give on personal and professional branding. But so personal branding, um, a personal brand sets you apart from your peers. So if you have a cultivated personal brand, this is who I am. This is what you get whenever you're going to hire Jordan also. Yes, you're going to get the the years of experience at this job and this job and what I've learned here and blah blah blah. But this is what you're getting as a person. And so I am a faith-based person. I am an avid reader. I am a listener. And this is who I am. When I put that out there, I'm establishing, okay, he does this well, but at the same time, this is who I'm getting as an individual. You know? And again, you can't you can't stress that enough. When uh I was in my time today, when I was cultivating and creating some content, you know, I spent a lot of time on faithfulness, you know, and, you know, I just, you're going to be seeing if you, if you follow JL, you're going to be seeing it, but there's, there's faithfulness as a filter that we should be using in business. You know, is my team faithful Are the people that I'm hiring, are they faithful? The, uh, my customers that I'm, uh, engaging with are they faithful to what I'm doing am I faithful back to them there should be a filter that we're using but again part of the way you 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 address that is you put that out there you know maybe you're going through a struggle and you put this is how I'm maintaining this is how I'm getting through it's been this long and whenever an employer comes back and, and reviews this because if you don't do it for them you better trust and believe they're going to do it about you. They're going to view your posts like, like how he was talking about. They're going to read your post and whenever they see your personal brand and this is what I've overcome. Like how I talked about during COVID, I lost 15 pounds. You know what that tells me as an employer, this person's committed. This person's not just sitting on the couch watching Netflix. This person's getting up and spending that 30 minutes every day. I like that, you know, and it's all Absolutely. part of you. Um, Absolutely personal brand also produces a value. Uh, again, if I don't have an established cultivated personal brand, then, then what it does is it's, I'm devaluing myself as an individual and I'm devaluing myself against my peers. You know, again, if we take resumes, lay them out on the table, we can, and they're all going to look very similar, but the person has a cultivated individual brand is going to stand out. Um, this is probably my favorite saying that I say, personal brand increases your floor. And so if I have a cultivated personal brand, I'm now elevating my minimum of where I can be at. You know, I'm not just a VP of sales and then something happens and now I'm, I have to look for that next role. No, I'm, I'm, I'm Howie. I am beast mode. That's who I am, you know? And from that Avenue, whatever the next role is, that's, it's going to fit into who I am. Um, and then, of course, uh, it's an evaluated filter for your daily life and for what you plan on doing. So, sorry for that long-winded answer, but no, I loved it. It was like water to my soul, actually. To be honest, not to be <laughs> too, 
not to be too dramatic, but <clears throat> yeah, it gave me some peace. I mean, I, you know, and that's, that's actually, you know what, not to get into that, but that's an example. And I hope this podcast, uh, and we have a, a, quite a backlog of a, well over 20 actually now, um, but that's, you know, feeding on content like this is actually another tactic. And I'm really glad you went down that road because not only was it not too much, it literally did help me, Brian, uh, you know, Howie on this, on this actual journey, right? Yeah. Uh, because I don't want to settle. And I think that's one of the things that, you know, you kind of, you just want a job and, you know, you, and at some point I, I realize you can't be too idealistic. So I'm not saying that. Um, but you know what, you should have a brand and a standard. And I, my goal and my, my purpose is to help people improve their business. And so I have found I can do that better as a management type of some kind, call it what you want. Um, you know, title can be a bit flexible there, but having the ability to make change makes me very happy. And it really genuinely fulfills my purpose. And I believe it's a God given purpose. Um, and so I really love, love, love to do that. And so, you know, having, you know, that's why that spoke to me beast mode is because it helps me to keep in perspective. That's who I am. Yeah. And, um, that should guide my journey. And by the way, I think when you have, you know, if you have some purpose statements of what speaks to you in your life, I think that actually would be a really good thing to do. I mean, listen, you're out of work. You have a little time on your hands. I'm not saying don't turn on Netflix at all because I've watched, especially when I'm working out, I'll watch like Disney plus and stuff. So that's, <laughs> that, so that's really cool. Watching all the, all the, all the Marvel again. Uh, maybe not in the correct order. I think is maybe I'm messing it up a little bit. Um, but you know, I think having some personal time to, again, that's a little bit back to self care and whether you pray or not, I think you deserve to sit with yourself and quietly think about your purpose and be able to have a little bit of that defined. I think it will help you have a little bit more clout and authority and, and courage as you face the job search, because it takes some courage. Um, you know, honestly, I probably, you know, I told, I told my wife today, you know, probably could have been a rep already. Right. And it's nothing wrong with being a sales rep, but I'm 20 plus years into this and I've been a manager for a long time and I, I'd rather help reps and, and mentor reps than be a rep. It's just, I can help eight people instead of just one customer. You know what I mean? And so there's just, that's more of a purpose thing. I've just learned it's a way to help impact a, you know, a lot of people in the company. Um, so I think, I think those are really good. So I think the preparation, I think we've gone through. And then I think just from a, just from a, like a, a job search tactic, I'm not doing as, um, as maniacal, like I was out of, out of work for 100 days in 2016. And I am not working as hard right now as I was then. Uh, you know, I'm not working as hard four years later. I'm not. Um, I'm working real hard, but I am getting more rest. I am working on self-care and I'm, I'm less stressful because I've been through it before. So what I'd like to tell you from that lesson is if this is the first time you've ever lost a job, it's going to be okay. You're going to have to work hard. But it, I literally, I can tell you from right now, I have had just as many strategic interviews working at a reasonable pace without fear and anxiety this time. Uh, I, like I said, I've had some down moments, but generally speaking, I've, I've had a, I've been in a place of health. Um, then when in 2016, I had 100 interviews in 100 days. I mean, imagine the kind of work that you have to do to have 100 interviews in 100 days, right? Um, and even though, of course, some of the interviews, you had seven for one customer, you know what I mean? For one company. So it's not like I had a hundred unique companies. I probably like 40 or something, um, or 45, maybe it was, but, um, anyway, so I would just say, don't run yourself into the ground with stress, but do work hard at it, you know, treat it like a job, you know, maybe you don't put in 40 hours, but you know, you ought to put in 28 hours, you know, you ought to put in, you know, five to seven hours a day, I would say, even if it's a little bit of a chill and you're going to go get some coffee and have you know, lunch with your spouse and then come back, you know, that's okay. But you do have to put in the time. So work hard at it, right? Be faithful. Um, you know, some sites that I like right now and that I also used in 2016 actually uh, are Glassdoor jobs. That's pretty good. Uh, LinkedIn jobs is super good. I think everybody uses them. Uh, yeah. The new kid on the block is ZipRecruiter. I do like them actually. And they do have, hmm. 
non-starter level jobs and they're advertising a lot right now but they actually are good there's a lot of jobs some of the jobs are even strategic um, i'm not using dice i'm not using and and you, you should check those out and see if you like them i just have a hard time maintaining more than a certain amount of of, of sites you know yeah um, but you know you have to go in there and individually set up your profile zip recruiter linkedin and glassdoor you have to go upload a resume you have to type in all kinds of questions and that makes you searchable by by recruiters on there and so you have to go do all that stuff you're gonna have to just do all that so yeah. get, you know get organized and be you know work hard at it but don't you know learn the lesson that i learned which is in 2016 when i was out of work i probably hurt my health maybe so don't work hard and then i would say the, the last thing that i have top of mind and i'll flip it back to beast mode for some comments uh and some feedback is that you know you know use your network that some of the best interviews that i've yeah. had this round have been my network yes i did have one amazing opportunity with that was non-network uh that i went very far in it didn't work out i found out today uh, but i went very far with it um so that i'm you know that was from just applying online so that was good um but you know two of the ones that are still super alive right now are from my network and so you're gonna have to let people know and um you know and then periodically i'm, I'm gonna have to remind them all again hey i'm still here no pressure but if you hear of anything da, 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 you know everybody should get your resume everybody should get your cover letter so it makes it easy for them to forward internally to the employers but yeah use your network so if you have to make a spreadsheet and write down every name and you don't have all their emails handy you know you can figure that out um, but you're going to have to use that network pretty hard because they know you and they have a little bit more interest in helping you uh, than some random recruiter on LinkedIn jobs who doesn't know you. True. Yeah. Yes. So much. I mean, there's so much good in everything that you're saying. I'm soaking it up as, as I'm, as I'm listening to you. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of things is, um, I know we're kind of mentioning it and we've mentioned it several times, just even on this podcast and just to hammer it at home, you know, if you are a, a sales rep, if you are a graphic designer, if you are, um, you know, whatever you are, it doesn't stop just because you got let go. It doesn't stop. Okay. Now as a, a an employer, you know, I have employees underneath me. Um, you know, if somebody got let go, you know, uh, three months ago, and three months ago, they were commenting, posting, and, you know, having all these insights and this, that, and other, and then all of a sudden they got let go, and now they don't have anything. Um, did you lose who you were? Or did what happened, you know, did, were those actually your insights, or was, was your business just giving you these ideas? You know, that's what I'm thinking of whenever I'm looking at it. And for me, and I'm the exact opposite type that I'm going to come out with insights and all this, irregardless of whatever the situation is. And so I'm pouring into that, that well, you know, I'm the type of guy who I'm going to call you. Hey, I don't need anything from you. I'm telling you, this is something you need to fix in your business. You don't have to hire me. Well, you don't ever have to talk to me again, but you should fix this one way or another. Have a great day. And then just leave it at that. You know, I might even call them anonymously so they don't even say that again. Hang on. You, you really got me here. Can yeah. you, can you park on that? Can you, can you say that again? Yeah. So we, we talked about this a little bit in insights uh, where insights are so valuable. And so one of the ways that, that I have tried to make JL unique and tried to make myself unique is that is just provide those insights and don't even ask for anything i'm not asking you for anything and quite frankly i'm not even giving you an opportunity to to offer me something i'm telling you you need to fix this have a great day you know go look at it go take what i just told you and go run the past somebody that you know and if you call me great if you but a lot of times i'll do it i try to do it in such a way um but it's that's off key um so a lot of times i'll just send it in a direct message and honestly, that's not a that's not a place where people will say, "Oh man, somebody gave me some really good insight. I need to go check my direct messages," or I'll go, I'll just comment directly on their post. Hey, you should do this, <laughs> you know. Um, and I'm I'm a pretty direct kind of guy, so it works well for me. But again, my goal is not 
um, hey, let's, you need to hire, um, you know, me. Sometimes it is, but sometimes it's, you should address this. And then three months down the line, whenever you see that it's starting to work out, you can call me and we'll play that game together. And some of that's just my business model, but it works well for people who are searching. Um, you have unique talents and skills and the way you cultivate that is using them. And so don't, don't that take good stuff. Don't take that time off. Um, that's awesome. You, I mean, social media, you have that network that's just sitting there that, I mean, you can just pour free insights everywhere. And if people take half of them, or, I mean, let's be realistic. If people take 10% of them, I mean, that's a tremendous amount of just uh, those seeds so, that are going to So just, a, just imagine, okay, so I'm a, so me personally, if I was a graphic designer and I'm wanting these, these jobs, right? So not only if I just go look at somebody's logo and say, hey, I love your logo. This is what I would change for it. You know, you know here's two cents. And I'm sending that out, right? But then at the same time, I'm putting out resumes. And so what what I'm telling, what I'm telling anybody who's looking to hire me is if you don't hire me, that's okay. Because I'm doing it over here. You know, I'm doing this work. And, you know, I'm not I'm not concerned about our phone call because I'm talking to the CEO. I'm sending my ideas out to here. So you can either pay me for my ideas or they're gonna pay me for my ideas. And that, I mean, it's just, it's a magical way to live, you know. Uh, Bob Goff has a great new book out that talks about um, uh, ambition and adventure. And that we can live in that ambition and adventure society. And, and he talks about a story about how he was walking, he was in Hollywood, and he was walking by, uh, no, he was in D.C. Uh, doing something and walked by. A, a set for a movie for uh, National Treasure. Oh, wow. uh, and so they knew that somehow they knew that was what was going on. And out of instinct, Bob Goff just picks up an extension cord, just right, puts it on his shoulder and walks right in and watches them film the movie. Right. And it was just taking the ambition of, I'm going to pick up an extension cord and we're going to see where this goes in the adventure of here we go you know and all started with i'm just going to pick up an extension cord and sure i'm not supposed to be there but it, i got an extension cord on my arm and nobody said anything but how many times can we do that in our own life i'm not supposed to talk to the ceo yeah. but you know how about i and how about I, instead of privately doing it, i just post it right on where everybody sees it you know and let the person shoot you down, let them not view it, let them whatever. But who cares? If you spend two hours a day doing that, just pouring in insights to individuals. Again, there's a lot of people who are going to take your insights and not not tell you anything. And that's okay. You know. But I, five years, I, ten years later, they're it, it'll come back. You know. A friend of my wife's actually um, said something like, Oh, I love, you know. How he's you know brands post, and um, and I was like that's so weird because he never likes and comments, mm. but it's it's getting out there like he appreciates he he loves the posts, and so it is nice that you know it's what Beast Mode is saying you know you, do you always get an immediate response or an immediate result no, but it's a it's like what he said earlier about seed planning is that you are planting seeds you have to know that about what you're doing. And I also like, I kind of saw a vision when you were talking beast mode. I think, you know, I've been looking for an excuse to, we talked about this in the prep a little bit. I've been kind of looking for some excuses to document some of the processes that I've done for this company or for that company. And I think it would be really nice to send along with my resume to a, a company or to post on LinkedIn samples uh, that people can just use uh, of things that I've done. And I am a nerd, uh, I'm a business nerd, business is kind of my hobby, so for me that would be a, a pleasure, actually, to create and recreate some of those things. So, um, yeah, I can kind of, yeah, that was, that kind of inspired me a lot. It, started, it kind of gave me some more ammo to, to talk about. What if I were to 
share privately, share publicly, uh, send it along with my resume and my cover letter. Here's some samples of my work. If I can walk into an interview and I can confidently tell the person hiring me, I can do the job. Um, I, I'm gonna be here, I'm committed. But at the same time, I bring my own portfolio. So I'm happy to work whatever lead you give me. But the moment you hire me, I'm gonna turn around and I got a network of people I'm gonna go tell about your company. All I need is the right from you to say so. That is, a, as a hiring person, if I don't have to find business for you to cultivate, if you can generate your own business, that's tremendous. And that all comes through personal branding. So I said, yeah, I'm active here. You know, people like and share my stuff or whatever it is, you know. I'm engaging with these individuals. And if you allow me to sell your product, then I'm gonna go sell it to them right now, you know? I mean, it's just a, just a tremendous way to, to, to separate yourself from everybody else. Good. Let's do it in advance. Well, that's some stuff they're not gonna hear uh, anywhere else today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I highly doubt that. I highly doubt that.